All right, Cherubs, right now we're looking at The Procession to Calvary by Peter Bruegel from 1564, and there's an overwhelming amount of stuff going on here. It's large, about four feet high by five feet wide, and Bruegel fit a whole lot. The title suggests that we should be able to find Jesus carrying his cross somewhere, since Calvary is the site of his crucifixion, and indeed, if we draw a line through the middle lengthwise and then again widthwise, we will find Jesus. That was easier than Where's Waldo, but still, not so easy. And the event seems to be getting very little attention. The only people who seem to genuinely care are here. The Virgin Mary, St. John, and so on. But while searching this canvas, I almost didn't notice them either. They're separate from the rest of the scene. Clearly, Bruegel is trying to do something different here. So let's give this some context. In 1564, the Netherlands was on the brink of a bloody independence war with Spain that historians call the Dutch Revolt. The Catholic King of Spain, Philip II, inherited the 17 provinces of the Netherlands, or the Low Countries, from his father, the exceedingly powerful Charles V. Charles was born in the region and spoke native languages fluently. Philip, however, did not. Though Charles had attempted to suppress the religious freedom of the provinces and levied heavy taxes against them, the local leaders empathized with him. They didn't do the same with Philip. Philip attempted to centralize the leadership of the provinces through his half-sister, Margaret of Parma, and local leaders obviously felt uneasy about this. In 1564, the year this was painted, these local leaders noticed a growing divide between the Catholic and Protestant provinces and looked to Philip for a plan. His plan was violence and oppression of Protestantism. With this decision, the Spanish troops stationed in the Netherlands to protect the border with France were viewed as a foreign occupying force. The characters in red we see throughout this painting represent the Spanish soldiers. Now we can see this painting is telling two different stories at once. Christ's march to his crucifixion and the Dutch fight for independence. Another example of this can be found here. One of the thieves to be crucified with Jesus is holding a crucifix. Now that just doesn't make any sense within the original story of Jesus' execution, but could in the context of public executions in Flanders. The landscape is littered with the relics of past executions. These wheels retain fragments of clothes and bodies that have not yet been eaten by birds of prey, and here we find gallows. During the course of this fight for independence and well after Bruegel's paint had dried, the Protestant and Catholic provinces of the Netherlands united, choosing to identify and unify as a nation rather than be divided by religious differences and win their independence from Spain. They chose to identify as Dutch primarily and then either Catholic or Protestant. Amazingly, Bruegel's painting seems to prophesy this shift in self-identity. Paintings like this typically have God parting the clouds and overseeing the action like so many paintings before. But instead, high above everything, watching it all, we have a miller, the man who produces the tangible bread of life for the Dutch people. An interesting decision and an interesting painting that can teach us quite a bit about the history if we know what to look for. Bruegel's pretty great, and if you like this video and this painting, you can check out a strange book and movie called The Mill and the Cross, or just try our video on the harvesters. Thanks for watching.